Hey guys, Ultra Maximus back with another Transformers review. This time, we're doing things a little different. We're going Beast Wars 2 style. Kind of. It's Leo Convoy, or Leo Prime, whatever you want to call him. Um, but it's actually not. This is a knockoff figure of the Japanese Takara version. It is... Um, Oh, goodness. Um, hang on, I got the name of it here. It's... Let me see. Space Warriors Transformable Beast Tech Fighter. Get that? That's that's the name of this figure. Um, it was a knockoff figure I found. Goodness, he's, I've had this guy probably for about 10 years. And I found him at... Um, Big Lots. Big Lot uh, uh, stores. And he was on a card, punch card, and I don't know if you can find this guy at conventions or flea markets or whatnot, but it was a $6 figure that I found, and it's it's a knockoff of the um, Beast Wars 2 Leo Convoy, which is basically Optimus Prime that turns into his Zodiac sign. Uh, you know, a Leo, Lion, Leo, yeah. No, actually, uh, it, in Leo Convoy, he really has nothing to do with Optimus Primal. It's just a totally different character. He's in charge of the Maximals in the Beast Wars 2 series. Uh, and it, I, I always liked the figure. I always thought it was kind of a nice figure. Um, but I never really wanted to pay the money for him at the time. And you can find him a little cheaper nowadays. But, I, you know, I picked this up and I've had him. And there are things I like about this figure over the original figure, which I would still like to get an original figure. But I do like this figure and I'm going to explain a few things why. Not only is this a knockoff figure, which was only $6, it's also got some mold differences that I actually prefer over the Takara version. Um, first of all, it's painted differently, totally different color. This is uh, yellow. It's Cheetor yellow. We have gold uh, tail and mane. It's actually a gold plastic with uh, uh, silver sparkle flakes in it, uh, which is very cool. The original figure had a white body, and I think it had a yellow mane and tail and a white face. And this one has a silver face. Um, also, the robot parts underneath, and when he turns into robot mode, and the original version um, are red. And this one's got kind of a silver-gray metallic color look to it. Um, there are other key differences. Uh, one, I love the paint. I love how this one's yellow. It's, it's yellow like a lion, and I like that. And this gold is so nice. It'd been, I think it'd been cooler if it was more of a, a goldish-orange color um, to, to be more accurate to a lion. I thought that would have been really, really nice. But is what it is. Of course, it's got a silver face. Now, the, the molding of the face is different. If you look at him, it's a different face mold than the one that came with the Takara figure. And I actually like this face better than I do the one that came with the Takara figure. Uh, it looks more Japanese anime to me than the other one did. And it just looks, it looks nicer, I think. I don't know. Um, sorry if you've got the Takara and you like the Takara one. This is the one I have. This is the one I like. Uh, it's also got some difference, uh, key differences in the main. Um, first of all, the Takara version does not have the under flap for the main, so this main goes completely around the head of the lion, which is very, very cool. I like the little ears uh, molded in. That's kind of cool. Um, and also, the side pieces of the main right here on the Takara one kind of fold down where this one doesn't. So um, I think there's more plastic around this one's main than there was in the Takara one. Um, the front claws are slightly different uh, than the ones on the Takara, which is not a big deal. Um, and the tail is got a key difference. The Takara one, I believe, the tail is reversed, where it kind of comes up and goes like downward, where this one's going more up, which is fine. Either way, it really doesn't matter too terribly much. And also, another key difference is this back piece, uh, the hindquarters of the lion itself. In the Takara version, you see more robot kibble on that hind end than you do in this one. So I think this is actually an improvement on the mold of the Takara one. Uh, it's definitely a nice figure. It's a nice sculpt. We have a little bit of robot kibble underneath and on the, uh, the legs, but uh, and the, the waist piece, but all in all, I mean, it's a decent looking lion, and it's a good sized figure, too. Uh, looks really, really nice. Uh, we've got, you know, fur everywhere, all over the molding. 
Um, we got the nice lion tail. Love the sparkles in there. The mane is just absolutely awesome on this guy. We got the little ears, and he's got the tongue and the teeth in there. Just looking really nice, really lion-like uh, with these paws and all that kind of stuff. We even have on his feet, we got the, the little side toe, the dew claw of the lion uh, there, which is very, very nice. So yeah, pretty decent. Um, transformation, I think, is a little bit different on this figure than it is on the Takara one. I'm not really sure because I've never owned it. Uh, but essentially what you're going to do under here, you're going to flip open. And what's really nice, even though this has got the gold plastic, the gold plastic is actually very, very nice on this figure. It's very durable. The yellow plastic's okay. It's a little lightweight. The, the gray silver plastic is the weakest point on this figure. And I mean, it's a relatively light figure, uh, but it's not too terribly bad. Uh, this could be reproduced in a better plastic and, and it'd be awesome. Uh, but we're going to fold out his lion mane pieces here. Ah! All right. And then his arms for the robot and everything, that's all up under there. You're going to pull, you're going to pull this out. It's on ball socket joints that click up. So you're going to, again, just kind of get these guys out. This one's kind of fussy. And this is actually the worst part of the transformation is getting all this stuff out from up under there. And you can see, even there, we've got little robot parts, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, we're going to fold that down, get all that kind of good stuff out. Um, the lion head... All this stuff is going to flip up this way. Um, doo -doo -doo. I'm going to pull this kind of open. Now over here is the storage compartment for his head. Which you're going to kind of get out. If you don't have nails, this is difficult. Oh my gosh. Once you get him in there, you can't get him out kind of deals. Ah, I'm going to use a pen. See if that works. Yeah, too big. Hang on a second. I know. We'll use a toenail clipper. This is one of the bad things about being a guy is not having any nails. Come on, guy. There we go. Goodness. Ah, there he is. <clears throat> All right. So there's his head. We got his head out. And then... Actually, I want to put... Pull that up and over. You're going to close that piece back up. This is going to come down. All that kind of good stuff. Now his arms you're just going to kind of fold out like this he is a bloody mess you're going to fold these pieces up back up here like this is arms ugh, ugh. so sink that down a little bit <clears throat> spin his waist around his legs will spin so that you get the robot bits on the outside and then you're going to pull his feet heels out like so and then underneath there are little hooks where these guys his arms are going to fold underneath to lock into place. Just kind of got to get him back there. <clears throat> Up and under like that. <clears throat> and then kind of fold down his bits of lion. Oh, you got to twist the head. <clears throat> well, now bits of lion here. And then you're going to twist the lion 
arms back up around like this. Oh my gosh, it's falling apart. Hang on a second. Get up under there. Ah, all right. <clears throat> okay, make sure I got this guy looking mostly right. Yeah, there he is. <clears throat> Bink. He's got his tail. Yeah, there we are. So, here we go. Here we have him in his robot mode. <clears throat> but you want to bring your, your lion bits up so you can basically see his face. He kind of gets hidden there. Uh, yeah, there he is. What's nice is he's got his Maximal logo, which is very cool. I wish there was a little bit more detail on this guy besides just being gray like this. Uh, the head would be nice to have a little blue in there. Um, and this could be an easy paint job if you wanted to. I'm just amazed it has the actual Maximal badge on there, which is very interesting. But all in all, yeah, he looks pretty good um, for the Beast Wars character. He's obviously just got chunks of lion hanging all over the place. Now, the uh, one thing that's kind of cool, this figure's got these big, giant claw things that come around that act as a, a type of weapon. Uh, so he's got this kind of these claw things, and that's on both of the uh, lion arms. I never I never really deploy those things. They look kind of goofy, but that's one of the little gimmicks that it had going on there. Um, but all in all, yeah, I mean, he look, he's a good-looking figure. He looks good on the shelf. He is, once he's in robot mode, he does look a little bland because of all of that gray, but for $6, you really can't complain uh, too terribly much. Here he's, he's face a little bit better there. Um, turn his face a little bit sideways, and he's actually got a lot more robot parts there underneath. Um, kind of cool looking, but I always fold that up and just kind of put that down to the side so you can see him. Um, yeah, I mean, he's he's a, he's a good looking robot. He's um, definitely Optimus Prime looking, uh, or Leo Convoy looking, uh, looks pretty cool. He's just it's just that all that gray just kind of... I, I really like this figure in the lion mode, I think, better than I do in the robot mode. But all in all, I mean, I can't complain. It was $6. It's Leo Convoy. It looks pretty cool. I love the yellow. All the yellow on it looks really nice. And actually, I mean, if you painted this red, uh, I think it would clash too much. Um, the one thing I... Maybe some red highlights on the armor. Um, that would kind of, like, right here, that would kind of help out a little bit. And then paint his head blue. That would look not too terribly bad. But I'm going to leave him the way he is because I've had him for 10 years like this. And, um, you know, he is what he is. He's he's a, a, a rip-off figure, um, he, you know. And it's not a bad one either. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty good one. And this is a hard figure to find anyway over here in the States. And it's got some different moldings on it, which I thought was very, very interesting. So... Is this figure worth buying? Yes, I think so. Especially if you're a Beast Wars fan, you're going to love this guy. He's probably a little hard to find. You might be able to find him on the internet. Um, you might, I'm sure you're going to see him around at conventions. You may see him at a flea market or something. I wouldn't pay any more than $10 for this guy because at retail, he was $6. It is a knockoff figure, so keep that in mind. The value of this thing may have gone up. I don't know, but... I personally would not pay any more than $10 for this guy. Um, but as you can see, it's a fun figure. Uh, it transforms pretty interestingly. It looks great as a lion. And, um, you know, it looks okay the way it is. It, the colors match the way it is. But a few paint highlight apps, and this would be a really stellar-looking figure on your Beast Wars shelf. So there he is, guys. Leo Convoy. The knockoff. Thanks for watching and look for more videos in the future. Have a good one.